Hello everyone, welcome back. This is our fourth and final video in our series demonstrating how to solve systems of linear equations, both by hand and using software packages. So we've already gone through hand calculations, Excel Solver, Mathematica, and today is our last video on MATLAB. So if you're new to the, the video series, what we're doing is we're solving a multi-component mass balance problem. It's a fairly simple problem. Um, if you'd like to go back and look in the first video where you do the hand calculations, you can, you can go and learn more about the, the actual problem there and how to solve it. Um, or you can stop the video at this point and try to solve through to get the sets of equations that we're going to be inserting into MATLAB. Otherwise, uh, when you're ready, you can restart and we are going to keep moving forward. So. Here is our MATLAB command window. And um, if you're gonna work in this, one thing that's useful is to develop a script. So if you're gonna be working in this, you might wanna make a new script. And so that way you can actually store your uh, values and save them for, for another time instead of just working in the command window. So I highly recommend this. I actually have all of my notes in a script that I save, and then I can actually copy and paste from that during the video. And I can actually run that straight from the script and have it run automatically and make changes there if I need to. But we're going to run today in the command window. So the first thing we have to do in order for this to work is to um, define our variables in our system. So we're gonna use that using the sims um, function. And we're gonna basically define all of our variables, which are our mass flow rates of stream one, two, and three, and the mass flow rates of component A in each of those streams. All right, now that's gonna enable us to actually make um, equation variables that directly allow us to input the equations into MATLAB. And what we're going to do <coughs> is use some of the MATLAB functions to pull those information from those equations and have MATLAB build the matrix for us. So we're going to start off. We have six equations to match our six unknowns. And so our first equation is the mass um, of stream three. Mass flow to stream three is 60 kilograms per hour. So we don't have to put any, we don't have to put in any units. But we do have to make sure that we have that double equal sign, just like we had in Mathematica, between our left-hand side and our right-hand side of the equation, because the equal sign is how we define variables. Okay, double equals is how we write equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to copy in the values for our other equations, and we're going to hit enter to allow to store those in our system. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a MATLAB function and we're going to convert those equations into matrices. So we're going to do that by saying a comma b. Those are our matrix A, and then our vector B that's going to result is equal to equations to matrix. That's our function we're going to be calling. Uh, parentheses, square brackets, and then we're going to type in all of our equations, variables in between these square brackets. So EQN1, EQN2, etc. Okay, and then the square bracket. And then we're going to do the same thing with our uh, variables. And instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat and I'm going to copy this and I'm gonna paste that, and we'll just stick in the commas between each of our variables. All right, it's not cheating if you're saving time. All right, so we have that, and so I typed it wrong, let's fix that. So equation to matrix, not equation, no, it should be equations. Should be equations to matrix. MATLAB's so smart and fixed it for me. All right, so now what it does, it actually takes those equations and it puts them in a matrix, and this should match the one we developed in our hand calculation, and it puts our right side of the equation into a vector of our solution. All right, so now what we need to do is actually, th that just puts them into the form we need. Now we're gonna use the line solve function to actually solve these. So we're gonna say x, we're gonna store it in the variable x is equal to line solve a comma b. Whoops, we need the e there. All right, and we should be good to go. And so what it's gonna spit out is the solution to solving that system of equations. And it is identical to what we found previously. Really the only two variables we were trying to find were our mass flow to stream two, which is 90, 
and our mass flow rate of A in stream two, which is 24, and it matches identically. So all of these approaches give us the same result. Now you might find at times that when you do all of this, you end up with a list of fractions, which is not terribly useful. And so what do you do when you actually encounter that situation? Well, um, you can actually take, <clears throat> Uh, when you're when you're solving this and you can wrap your line solve in the VPA function which converts a fraction into a floating point decimal system and so we'll do that really quick it won't really change this because we don't have any fractions but it'll add a, it'll add a decimal point and so if you end up in that situation a situation make sure you use the VPA um, if you are someone who's really comfortable with MATLAB and instead of using the e equation to matrix function, you want to actually just plug in the matrix yourself, you can do that. Um, essentially, you'll just store it as you're still your function, your, um, your matrix manually. So I say, why not let MATLAB do it for you, but if you're if you think this is faster, then by all means go for it. So we can start plugging in our values in MATLAB. The matrices, uh, the matrix columns don't have to have commas between them, just spaces. And at the end of the row, you put in a semicolon. And so we can do that for each row in our matrix. This has to be within square brackets. Um, <clears throat> And we can define that as our matrix A. So this is essentially the left side of our sets of linear equations. The numbers represent the coefficients on all of our variables. All right, so this is this identical to what we were working with previously when we were doing the hand calculations. Um, we can do the same thing for our B. And B actually is a vector. Um, and so we, we have each of our numbers has to be separated by a semicolon. So 60, 6, 60, 14, 30 and 10. All right, so we'll store that. And now we can just use the line solve function again. And we get the same thing. So either way will work. So um, if you get comfortable, MATLAB's a really great approach to actually work with matrix calculations. This is my go-to place, but I think Mathematica is also re really useful. And actually, after doing an Excel, I think Excel is also pretty good as well. So any of these would really be acceptable approaches. Uh, it's really up to you to decide which program you're most comfortable with. Um, and then use that method. And unless, of course, someone's telling you you have to use a specific software program, in which case it's up to you have to use that. But otherwise, I'd say it's up to you. So that is it for our set of tutorials. Um, feel free to leave comments in the comment section on any of these videos. And with that, I, I wish you best of luck in your solving endeavors.